The COP28, an important United Nations climate summit, is being held in Dubai between November 30th and December 12th. COP, which stands for Conference of the Parties, is an annual meeting where 196 countries come together to discuss and negotiate global climate policy. At the COP28 conference, government representatives will report to their country's progress on climate change policies, set intermediate goals and make agreements to share scientific and technological advances towards global benefit. Experts believe that COP28 will aim to fill gaps in climate action and establish a climate damage fund. The summit will be the first formal assessment of the country's progress towards the 2015 Paris Accords target to limit global temperature rises to 1.5 degrees Celsius and to keep them well below 2.0 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times. Let's first take a brief look at the history of the COP summits and their achievements over the years. The first COP summit was held in Berlin, Germany in 1995. In the third meeting in Kyoto, Japan, in 1997, the Kyoto Protocol was adopted with a specific focus on reduction of greenhouse emissions and emission trading. The COP8, which was held in New Delhi in 2002, the Delhi Ministerial Declaration was adopted. It called for efforts by developed countries to transfer technology to minimize impact of climate change in developing countries. However, it was during the COP21 in Paris in 2015, which provided a watershed moment in the global effort against climate change. The adoption of the Paris Accords to govern climate change reduction measures from 2020 and to curb emissions to reach net zero by the middle of the 21st century was a key outcome. The COP26 summit in Glasgow, UK in 2021 saw the countries agreeing on the development of the Accelerating to Zero Coalition to accelerate the phasing out of fossil fuel vehicles and the Glasgow Climate Pact to phase down the use of coal-fired power stations. Subsequently, during the COP27 held in Egypt in 2022, there was an agreement on loss and damage, under which rich countries could compensate poor countries for damage caused by climate change. The 2015 Paris Agreement required each member nation to prepare, communicate and maintain successive nationally determined contributions that it intends to achieve. However, since the Paris Agreement, there have been shortfalls in achieving the goals set out in the agreement. Many countries have not met their targets and global emissions continue to rise. So, what have we achieved so far? So, we are not really uh, even close to uh, all three pillars in terms of mitigation, adaptation and loss and damage. And what is critical among all these is provision of finance, which these countries have failed to provide. So while we have um, talked about several targets and countries have uh, submitted their climate action plans or what we call NDCs, but the reality is and the recent reports, uh, emission gap report, um, production gap report, as well as adaptation gap report, clearly indicate that we are nowhere near the target uh, that we had to achieve to stay below 1.5 degree uh, temperature rise. So the recent report said that, in fact, we are going to be producing double the amount of fossil fuels in 2030 than what would be consistent with the long-term temperature goal of the Paris Agreement. Um, at the same time, there's a huge adaptation gap. As the recent report said that uh, the gap is to the tune of 10 to 18 times of what uh, is being made available right now, and the need is far, far greater. And if we do not support communities to adapt, we are going to see much more loss and damage uh, that will arise from increasing uh, climate impact. The Emissions Gap Report, published recently by the United Nations Environment Programme, reveals that the current pledges under the Paris Agreement still put the world on track for a 2.5 to 2.9 degrees Celsius temperature rise above pre-industrial levels in this century, as against the goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius. G20 nations, notably China, the US and the EU, are responsible for nearly 80% of the cumulative fossil and CO2 emissions. The US accounts for 4% of the current world population, but contributed 17% of global warming from 1850 to 2021. 
including the impact of methane and nitrox oxide emissions. India, which accounts for 18% of the world population, but till date has only contributed 5% of warming. So, experts believe that one of the issues that COP28 may face is the choice of Sultan Ahmad Al Jaber to lead the summit. He heads the United Arab Emirates state oil company and his appointment has been controversial. Another important issue that will be discussed at length is the implementation of the much-awaited loss and damage fund. The fund was designed to help vulnerable countries cope with the impacts of climate change. So in the light of this, what are the expectations from this summit? All COPs, uh, that is Conference of Parties, are very political events. Right? There are lots of interests being at, at stake. And while we have to try and address the climate crisis, every country is invariably looking out for its own interests. But I think the key is to find the common ground across all of these interests. And, and the argument that we should not only focus on coal, even though it is the most fuel for sure, but why should we penalize countries who, who have more coal than they have oil, like India? We have to use the fuel that we have. Should the discussion only be on coal, which is the most polluting fuel, or should it be on all fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas? I think this will be a very big issue. Another issue that I just want to flag is that this is a COP where they will take much more seriously discussion of adaptation. How do you adapt to climate change? That's going to be extremely important. And the last issue is, all of this costs money. What progress can the COP make on figuring out where that money comes from? How much will be public money? How much will be private money? How can private money be induced to uh, uh, invest in developing countries? Dubai COP28 is an important United Nations climate summit that aims to find and fill gaps in climate action and establish a consensus on the Climate Damage Fund. However, the summit has to overcome the challenges and the general sentiment that COPs are failing to bring the world together to agree on ways to address the climate crisis. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. He's moving from employee to employer. Business Standard.